Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832 732-7789. you guys and welcome to another episode of hashtag it's your girl tiffany um no co you can catch me on instagram at underscore tiffany no co and of course on my website at www.tiffanynoco.com today we got some really good stuff in store for y'all because there's a lot of crazy shit that just popped off over this week all right we better talk about it but um as we're about to get into the show i'm going to introduce to you guys um, my co-host Zane Weeks, and then he can roll in our guest because we got a popping ass guest for y'all today. Yeah, what we doing? <laughs> well, it's your boy Zane. Make sure y'all follow me at Zane Taught Me. That's Z A N E Taught Me on all social media platforms. And I want to introduce our popping ass guest, as Tiff said, <laughs> Faith Calwriter. Call writer. Call writer, yeah, I messed that up, my fault. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> yes, I'm Faith. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Queen Simba underscore. Or Instagram, Miss Faith Elizabeth. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, just before we can get started, we do uh, want you to tell us a little bit about what you do because I know you did like some work with the Houston Chronicle, a yes. little bit of like intern work. So you know, just brief us a little bit on what you do, get a kid some of your background. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I did intern for Houston Chronicle. Um, we did interviews. We had like our own paper that we ran in that section for the student interns. I was the sports editor for a short period of time and also uh, did some freelance sports like where we did okay. sports statistics. Um, so I have a little experience when it comes to interviews and also um, journalism and writing. Okay. It's a wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag is a wife. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't have even guessed that. Sports, I, I would not have guessed that. Not to say that you can't do sports. <laughs> Anybody can do sports, you feel me? Right. But, you know, I wouldn't have guessed that. So that's a good look. And that's funny because I actually had somebody on um, a last guest who did a podcast. Well, he does a podcast with ESPN. Oh, so that's wow. pretty dope that, you know, you're into sports or you did the sports thing as well, too. Um, but that's a little bit about our guest, so let's get into the topic of conversation, because we got a lot of shit to chew into 40 minutes, yes. you feel me? So the first thing that we're going to talk about on our list, and I think everybody wants to talk about this, we're going to bring out Bill. We've been talking about Bill Cosby, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yo. And his pudding pop. And his <laughs> He might want to keep them pudding pops at home for where he going. I don't think he want to bring them with him. You feel me? <laughs> but, bro, like, okay, so we all know that he just got um, found guilty on three charges of indecent um, assault. <laughs> this has been going on for quite some time. You know How what I'm saying? It, this started, like, last year. It's been going on for at least um, a a little well, over a year, year. Mm -hmm. yeah that the whole me too movement came out and all of these women bro like over it's been like 50 women that have yeah. come out and said that he's drugged them and um had sex with them and i just don't know how to feel about it but 
But my my question to you is: You think they're all lying? You think, I mean, you think some of them are lying? I think, think some of them are lying. Like oh, it can't sure. be that many women. Come on, bro. We talking about Bill Cosby? It could be fifty women. We talking, talking about, about Bill Cosby? Cosby. For sure. What's that mean? But that doesn't no. all, that also doesn't make him completely innocent. I mean, he's still. I mean, I'm not saying that he doesn't have any victims, but. Um, that is a large amount of women, like, all at one time. But then yeah. again, it would take time for someone to come out about something. He is getting really old. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to lose that opportunity to, like, come out about maybe an incident that happened like that, yeah. even if it happened so look, long ago. Look, all I have to say about I this. I think it's already too late. If, <laughs> no, <laughs> He's sure. 80, bro. He's 80, He's 80 years 80. old. Yeah. If one part, if, he's, if he raped one girl, I don't care if the other 49 get that meal ticket. That's what he deserves. That's just That's just me. <laughs> This is very true because, hey, you know, we can't condone rape, okay? As a true. woman, I'm going to completely 100% back that statement. You can't condone rape. However, this it's been these alleged or now proven guilty um, statements, they, they happened over a decade ago. So why wait now? This man is 80 years old. And y'all, first of all, y'all sentenced him to 30 years in prison, bro. Come yeah. on. 30 years? I mean, but look, 30. Tiff, I know a Bill lot Bill ain't of, got 30 years. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of women that are victims of sexual assault and don't come out. So, I mean, I'm not surprised. But you are right. 30 years later, it's like, yeah, now you want to come out? Yeah, extremely long time. I mean, it's probably two different things. It's he like, can't even serve the full amount of time that, you know, I guess that we're yeah. expecting from him. And then he built, like, a legacy, you know, beyond that period. So, See, okay, this is my take on it. And I feel personal about this just because, you know, I did watch the Cosby show growing up. And I feel like it is, okay, first of all, um, the girl, Felicia, the girl, my girl, (laughs) Felicia Rashad came out and she made a statement about it. And, you know, people, they definitely took that and ran with it because in a part of her interview, she said, you know, forget the women. But she didn't mean it in the sense of, like, forget the women, like, what they're saying don't matter. But she's saying, take them out of the equation and think about the legacy that this man has brought into the culture for black people you know the cosby show True. is it's extremely important to the culture because it shows a picture of a successful black family definitely you know what no, i mean no. with the with a successful marriage kids that are going to college are actually bringing their kids up right with some morals and some values so mm-hmm. it's it and then they've, they've taken all of it off the air they've taken all of the air so now you're you're stripping away from a culture that needs this type of it's it's highly important because we don't have those type of role models that are in the tv media so you you just took that away from all the kids that's growing up um another family that they can look up to and say okay this is like the foundation that i want to give to my kids some people didn't know nothing about college or they didn't have an idea about college growing up until they watched the huxtables yo yeah, I feel sure. that. But you know what I mean, it's just it's important. And then, then okay, mm-hmm. y'all know because I'm with the conspiracy <clears throat> shit, bro. Right, why yeah. you had to take it when he was gonna buy um NBC? He really, we really think it was. It, I mean, I think it's just bad timing. At the end of the day, like bad time, everything bad is bad timing. <laughs> Age, everything, <laughs> bad timing. Everything. My ass. You think I it's a conspiracy? Condone. I do. What, what, <laughs> what you think, Faith? Um. I do feel that the way that everything came about was mm, sort of a setup. That's how it seems because there's so many people at one time. But, like, I honestly can't say, like, I don't condone any type of sexual assault or sexual abuse. But we do, like, we should close in on everyone who's doing it, not just Bill Cosby and then, oh, yeah, we're going to cut off all Bill Cosby shows. Right. Like, our hashtag, not my president, was um, (laughs) he, during the general election, there were sexual assault allegations and everything and i mean he was still elected for president exactly. so i mean Wait. if we can get we should zone in on everyone oh. you know there's <laughs> harvey weinstein you know he was yeah. a successful person and he just paid off his victims or at least try yeah. to pay them off so i don't think and that all they it's got fair. was fired all they got was fired you're right. taking away this man like honorary degrees you have him going through all of these this court scandal you're take stripping away from him um like plaques and shit that he's gotten from different colleges and just like stuff right that acknowledges who he is not to mention okay i don't know if y'all knew this y'all know how much bill cosby was worth mm, i wasn't aware like 100 million dollars 400 million, million. million dollars yeah his shit has dropped dramatically i don't know what the number stands at now but it's like Look, he probably died anyway, so. I don't give a damn. <laughs> he 
got a wheel. Somebody on that wheel is mad as hell because I'm trying to get that money. I feel it. Took millions of dollars away from me. But, like, that's what's going on with the scandal with Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. And I'm just going to say, like, you know, it's been proven that he's guilty. I don't think anybody really knows. You know what I'm saying? Because there's always these different sides of a story, especially when it's happened so long ago. You know, right. are you really going to get the truth? But I'm just going to say my personal opinion on it is attack. it's an attack on a legacy that's important to the black culture. That's my take on it. Okay. I have to agree with that for the show. All right, you guys. Well, everybody, we are um, going live on Facebook right now. And you can just, like, we all gave out our Instagrams and our websites and whatever. You can always add us. Let us know what you think about it. Definitely chime into the yeah. show and give us your thoughts and opinion. And if you disagree or you have some other um, opinion that you want to debate, argue, just throw out there on the side, you feel me? Just hit us up and we'll definitely chat with y'all. But uh, rolling into something else that happened over the weekend that was, like, really big and... Again, it was devastating to the culture. We're going to talk about the boy, Ye. Kanye. So it all started with his um, tweet a couple days ago when he tweeted. And Lost I know he on. knew. I know <laughs> he knew that everybody was going to come nah. for him because you brought Obama into the situation. The boy tweeted that so crazy. Obama has done nothing for Chicago. For Chicago. For Chicago. Mm-hmm. What what has Kanye done for Chicago? Don't get what me started I, on well, that, Kanye. Nah, nah. Uh, I can't what has really he really say. done for Chicago? He gave us some good some good albums back in the you feel me? Some albums that would that but how did how did he how did he help <laughs> Chicago out though? Like he's talking about Obama. What was, what was, Obama, what was Obama supposed to do? Like so do y'all think that it has something to do with since he's about to drop something and he's trying to like pull in that for type sure. of attention? He's, a, he's an attention whore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you're an attention whore. But I look, <laughs> I just think he didn't lost his damn mind. <laughs> I mean, just outside. Of, I mean, outside of that, like outside of the Obama tweet, like this man Kanye basically said slavery was an option. What, what, what interview was that in? Was that in the that Charlemagne? just happened today? Yeah, that, that just yeah. happened today. <laughs> the interview with Charlemagne yeah. and um, Van is that his name from TMZ? Uh, he made a statement about it, and I want all y'all to go and check it out because his response to what Kanye said was absolutely. Perfect. Okay, I can't say it verbatim because I don't really remember everything right. verbatim. Right. You feel me? <laughs> but what he said was just like um, it was a really good response. But I feel like Kanye lost his shit. Uh, one with okay, have y'all heard the song with Ti? What song? He just dropped the song. Oh no, I won't, I won't listen to it. I'm not listening to it. You're not gonna listen to nah, it. I <laughs> just happened to catch oh, it. Oh, on is that the right? Radio. It's not. It's not in your library. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I ain't download nothing Kanye. Uh-huh. Okay? You, you streamed it, though. Not yet. You feel me? Because I'm going to be one of them secret ones that's just like, man, fuck that nigga Kanye, and then you're going to be jamming all your shit. You it's know it's what a saying? lot of those. Don't get it. It's a lot of those. Yeah, me. yeah. It's a lot, <laughs> for sure. But um, so that was the first thing. That was the, the tweet when he said Obama didn't do anything. And y'all can research this because I feel like there's a large number of people, you know, they won't come out and say it just because nobody wants to downplay obama okay first black president and you know who you know made history nobody's gonna like talk shit about him but i know there are some people that feel like that okay so i just want y'all to go and like google some shit that he said because um you know as far as education and um jobs i'm what the fuck what, what's, what am i what am i trying to say tell uh, me exactly because i wrote it down let me just resort to my notes <laughs> Um, so what he did was in decrease, reduce the um, unemployment rate. That's what I was trying to say. I said mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he killed up Osama Bin Laden, too. He, he didn't do that shit for the culture. That was not that for, was the for the culture. That was for the culture. That was not for the culture. That was for the culture. For the culture. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I, would have I to mean, be every be large great. terrorist that we knew about growing up, he definitely he was the biggest tackled, one. tackled all of them during his presidency. Hashtag that for the culture in this hell. But that was like um, one of the things. Hashtag warheads on foreheads. <laughs> what was that saying? What you say? Speaking to your mic, Zane. What you say? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to cut his camera off real quick since he don't want to repeat himself. But um, yeah, so that was like the big thing. I, I really want to give like a snippet of that. Um, that song that he has with T.I. So the song basically is like a conversation in between the two, and he's like giving his political views on why he feel like he loves Trump. <sighs> I, I can't. 
can't even with Kanye. That whole statement just sound like shit. Then on the song he mentions like, oh, okay, I was in the sunken place and now I'm not. No, he's crazy. <laughs> he's fucking he's insane. insane. No, he's insane. He's a crazy insane. guy. <laughs> he's he a crazy is guy. insane. I need his weed man for sure. <laughs> I need that. I don't think he on no weed, bro. That <laughs> he is off that sherm. He's smoking sherm sticks. <laughs> <laughs> that is not weed for sure. But okay, let me ask y'all this because you know everybody be talking about the Kardashian curse and how it affects every man that they're with. Is Kanye like proof of it? Like one hundred percent proof that there's a Kardashian curse? Oh, definitely. But he's like the the best proof of it all. Like he, Kanye's lost his shit. Yeah, like, completely. He's not the same person shit, like, anymore. Oh That's why God. they say old Kanye. Yeah, we, I, we, miss, we, the I miss the old Kanye, Kanye for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, shout out to that song. Man, that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this man used to he used to hate Bush and. All um, that. It's right. like he's, he's flip flop dirty. Yeah. Like, oh, he made an open yeah, statement Michelle. about Bush and his uh, views against mm-hmm. black people. And we all rally behind which it. Donald Trump has made similar. I mean, he's made outrageous comments about black people. So oh, for sh- all minorities, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for Kanye to say, you know, wear a Make America Great Again hat, and then and then and then truly from the heart argue with other black people and people in general. Just truly crazy. from the heart. <laughs> from the yeah, heart. No, for he real. means that yeah, shit. For real. Sincere. Like, he, he backs that shit up He's dropping 100%. messages on Twitter from other celebrities. Like, like, the, like 100% he backed that shit up. But um, <laughs> here's my thing. Okay. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong on this just because so many other artists are not agreeing with it. But I feel like Kanye is so far out of reality mm-hmm. as far as being... Because, you know, these celebrities, they be saying shit you know, and they speak from a rich nigga standpoint. It's like, bitch, we can't relate with that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know we may not be poor, but we ain't got no kind of money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a lot of things that happen as far as, like, politi- politically, it don't really touch them. You know what I'm saying? The top 1% are, like, rich people. They never really get the shitty end of the stick, so to speak. So I feel like for him to be like, oh, I support Trump, yada, yada, he's probably had these conversations with him that he agrees with that we that like, we, we don't know about. We can't have those type of conversations because we just in different brackets. You feel but me? Exactly. Like, but like, what if you was in that 1%? You vote, I still you vote, wouldn't you vote, be you with the shit. I ain't vote at all. Boop! What? Then, you ain't vote at all? Nope. Nope. What that's are you, a, that's what are a, you on? That's a, that's, a, that's a story for um a, for a different <laughs> show. We're not going to get into that <laughs> shit today, but I need the one the motherfuckers have my vote. But um, since we were talking about voting and we're talking about the top 1%, make sure you, I'm going to um give you a way on how you can get into that 1%. And we're going to roll into this portion of the show being sponsored by none other than Houston Housewives of Finance. So, did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education. 33% or more than 77 millions of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month, and 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at Houston Housewives of Finance.com. Ask us how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshops near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. All right, you guys. Make sure y'all go take care of how you can get your coins Get in your order. bread right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Or get your bread right, as Zane wants to say. Um, but I don't know. Do y'all, do y'all have anything else to touch base on Kanye and his craziness? No, nah, not really, man. No? Not really. Okay. I know, I know, but just keep it in the book. I'll probably listen to his album, though. Everybody gonna listen to his damn album. You know what I'm saying? They all it, because it's always like, man, fuck with that nigga saying. But now on the low, like, what what is yeah. he really saying? And everybody's gonna jam that shit at some point. So what like, you, mean? you know, it's just like the Yeezus album. Ye- <sighs> How dare he call himself Yeezus? Y'all all listen to that album. Okay, next. So uh, what we're going to talk about now is I want to get into the girl Issa Rae, okay? Because um, I fuck with Issa. I fuck with Issa hard. <laughs> 
Same. That's my dog. I, I fuck with Issa Hart. <laughs> like, I even went back after I started watching Awkward and watched her YouTube shit. Like, I was hooked. You feel me? And it's no, the same shit, basically. No bullshit. It's the same. You know, but I even went back and watched that, you know, because she just inspires me. You feel me? Um, but let's talk about her, okay? So, just recently, and I don't even think this book is new. I didn't look to see when it actually came out. Um, but... So some some parts of her book came out, and one that stood out most was um, her saying that educated black women should seek out a date an Asian man and not the Filipinos, okay? Those because are those, are yeah. those are the black ones. Those are the blacks of the Asian community. All the real nigga Asian. Ooh, all the Filipinos. All the Filipinos. <laughs> what? Or Vietnamese. I'm just that's my experience. <laughs> All the that gangster ass agents are Filipino. That might be right. Um, <laughs> is Issa Rae from Cali? Is she from Cali? She from Cali. That's why, because all the gangster Filipinos that stay in Cali, she body. might be right with your machine, <laughs> you know, <laughs> might be able to test to that. But anywho, again, different story. Um, so she said you should date the ones that's like from Vietnam, Thailand. Mm-hmm. Anywho, basically what she was saying was, if you're an educated black woman, you should seek out an Asian man just because they are more intellectually compatible. Now, what y'all got to say about that? Um, I just, you can go first. Um, what I would have to say is that it is kind of like a bold statement, but a lot of the things that I was reading on Twitter mm-hmm. was like people were upset because they're saying like when it comes to a black man, no one says anything about them preferably choosing to date Latino women or white women. So mm-hmm. if she says something like that, then it shouldn't be a problem. You know, because there's never a problem the other way around. So There's never a problem? I mean, there is. There is a problem, but I'm saying that the way that it's looked at is if they preferably choose that, like, why are they going off on her about saying, okay, you should choose educated Asian men? Mm-hmm. Besides, I do think, like, I'm all for interracial, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a product sure. of an interracial couple. Same. So we should be more like diverse and also like adapt to different cultures for sure mm-hmm. you know not just be closed off but it was like more so of a bold statement look 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 let me just interject real quick look i don't even think the statement was that bold i just feel like she should have went into more detail like why just asian men white men too like why, why, like, 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 <laughs> it was the way that it was worded <laughs> it was the way. what i had to throw us out there like that that, that's it. That's, that's I it. mean, white men. I mean, she just said, why, why did she pick Asian men? That's what I wanted to know. Like, was it off her experience? Did, is she, she off that stereotype? Is it that stereotype that Asian men are just smart? Like, mm-hmm. what? Like, why did she choose Asian men? You know. Cause that is kind of weird. It yeah, is if you ask me. Because I feel like the stereotypical path that goes, like, you need to get your white man. He got good credit. He got a car. He got a nice He got a nice house. He ain't going to be any mamas. You know what I'm saying? Why Asian men? That's what everyone's used to hearing. So, like, hearing her say, say that brings a lot of attention to, <laughs> to that one She's just trying to get pub for her I show. I wonder why. She's trying to get pub for her <laughs> show. <laughs> no, he didn't. She, oh, she leaked the shit herself. Right? She was like, I'm about to fuck it up. Yeah, Awkward to see the three coming out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, here's my thing. I have no real problem with interracial dating um i do have my preferences uh but you know i've i've dabbled a little bit in interracial dating, and i actually did date an asian but <laughs> i don't think it was of her liking because he was filipino oh oh so you got she wanted to hood asian i was out there you know eating pho and shit <laughs> <laughs> but i personally I kind of do have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the interracial dating, but I do kind of have a problem with the statement just because why you can't like uh, push for your push for your same men of the same race as you two. Like, come on, bro. You black. You a black woman. You made a whole fucking career off of talking about being an awkward black woman or just being a black woman in general, and now you pumping for somebody else like why can't you date a, a um intelligent black, black man, man what's wrong saying? with that you know what I mean they like they don't exist or some shit like they just out here like thumbelina you might find a, a fucking fairy they out there <laughs> like black men are just as educated as anybody else you feel me mm-hmm. now we got just like any other races you know we was mentioning like you said filipinos they the blacks so they so everybody got 
the bad ones in a fucking culture, just like black men. You feel me? But there's some good ones out there too. So pub for them too. You know, just in parentheses maybe just put black on the side and we don't mean black like how you put the filipinos out there in a bad spotlight you know just throw them in the mix too because it is educated black men out here that are very much so dateable no nah, for sure i mean nope. and <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> i'm off you <laughs> Okay, um, so that was my take on that. But shout out to the girl Issa, you know what I'm saying? I give her a pass. I'm not mad at her, you feel me? And then she's from Cali, too, so that's a whole different type of um, culture that she's used to. And then, I mean, don't get me wrong, because Houston is completely, like, largely diverse, but I know, like, Cali has, like, their own ways. You know? No, for sure. So <clears throat> I'm not really sure. Maybe I need to move to Cali. And that's why I'll find the good Asians. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else to, to talk about on that? Mm. Nah, not at all. No? No, nah, get you an Asian, I guess. Mm. Get you an Asian. I got Japanese in me, so a little bit of everything. You know what I'm I got the best everything. What else? Go ahead. <laughs> Listen up all the shit I'm stuff. black, white, Japanese. I'm all that. Like, you Puerto all Rican, that? I'm all Puerto like. Rican. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm everybody type. Oh. Okay. So you like a, a sampler platter is what you're trying to say. <laughs> mm. Shining out. <laughs> yeah. Shining out. Yeah. Hashtag I'm calm. <laughs> I mean, hey, you said it. But anywho, uh, while we're talking about all of the different mix that we got, we are gonna give a shout out to Facebook because we know it's a it's Facebook is its own community and we know everybody is out there fishing in the same pond. So with that being said, Facebook. Um, live, we ask that you subscribe to our show on all major platforms, including iTunes, Solid Play, Google Play, and Stitcher. Review our show in iTunes with constructive feedback. Share this Facebook live post and the entire show with your family and friends and donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. You can donate at www.thespirit.tv slash donate. All right, Facebook. Okay, so um, one of the next things that I want to talk about is Avengers. Who's seen Avengers? Don't ask me if I've seen it. <laughs> Don't ask yeah. me either. You haven't seen it? Nope. Oh, no. Did you see a thing? <laughs> I've seen it. How was it? it Please was, share with <laughs> us. <laughs> it, it was great. It was great. Um, Pretty much, you know, I didn't read the comic books. And I was asking a lot of questions in the movie theater, and I was pissing a lot of people off. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. At the end, oh, I don't want to do any spoilers. But um, a great movie, um, a lot of sadness. And, uh, you know, I feel like everybody needs to go out and see it, for sure. For sure. I, can't, I, can't, I really don't want to talk about it because I will start spoiling it. For, oh, for, uh, for uh, I fact. forget about you guys that haven't seen it, so I won't spoil it, but I did see it. I mean, um, so what I want to talk about first is how much money do y'all think that Avengers made? Because we know black hi- black history, Black Panther made history, right? With its opening weekend, mm-hmm. do y'all think Avengers topped that? For a f- yeah. Oh, for facts. Yeah. Damn. I think it already did. I think it already. Did. Yeah. So it broke records. It broke records. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Avengers brought in in between two days to over two hundred and fifty million dollars. That's just in. That's just in um, North America, and then in its foreign box office, brought in three hundred and eighty million for a grand total of six hundred and thirty million dollars in its opening <laughs> weekend. Let's talk about pay. You feel me? That's money. Like, that's crazy. I wouldn't have... Okay, this is what, the fourth Avengers? I'm a big Avengers fan. I followed all of it. I pretty much love anything that Marvel does, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm just really into that. Um, but anywho, I wasn't expecting for it to make that much money. Why not? Because that's crazy. It's 10 years in the making. They've been 10 years. Like, you think they're going to do like, 10 years of work, 10 years of movies, 10 years of actors, money, resources? Like, why would it not crew that amount of money i just didn't expect it to and it's a and then like you've seen it it's you know crazy. everyone loves mashups so <laughs> yeah, seeing like true. all their superheroes in one movie is bringing a lot of bank that's true i didn't really think about it like that but i just didn't expect for it to to make like that much money i mean What'd maybe i'm just <sighs> i didn't expect 630 <laughs> million you feel me i wish i was in that pot Rolling around, y'all ain't even had to give me a whole million. I just settled for half. But um, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that it was gonna make that much money. But also, I 
personally, okay, so we know that they threw Wakanda up in there, okay? And I'm going to just say for those who are um, big fans of the, the Black Panther movie, I was, I was a bit offended. I'm going to just leave it at that. And the ending was bananas. Like, it was, it was crazy. Wait, why were you offended though? I was I'm offended. Kind of, I'm baffled. Like, uh, I don't want to give too much of the movie away. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say, but we gonna. I'm gonna like maybe mention it again next week. So then you know I'm gonna give y'all an, a week to go see the movie. So the movie. then I can like spoil it for y'all for the ones who haven't seen it. Because <laughs> um, we had a whole week to go. Yeah, see a whole it. week. You know, I gave you a deadline. But I'm just gonna say I was a bit offended. You know, personally, not offended. <sighs> okay, I, my. Maybe my choice of words is a bit strong. Or maybe it's not, because I felt like they just kind of disrespected Wakanda. What's wrong with y'all? How dare you? Disrespected Wakanda. They disrespected us. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. Oh, my God. And the prince. Ugh, the king. Oh, Jesus. Too much for yeah, me you to spoil, handle. Yeah, you spoiling stuff now. Too much <laughs> for me to handle. I can't give y'all too much. I am going to say, like, the ending is, is nuts, okay? And I'm going to also say this for you people who be rushing out of the movie theaters. I don't know where the fuck you going, yeah, okay? You want to wait till the credits roll. I'm going to just say that. But if you're an Avengers fan, you know that. Did you even get that, though, like, at the end? I stayed to the did credits you for Did you understand? Did you understand what you were looking at, though? Did I ask him? Did you, you the person, yeah, they, the you person they, you know, who was asking uh, the questions <laughs> in the movie going to ask me if I understood it. <laughs> hey, look, all I know is I feel like if you're going to read the comics, you're not going to understand what happened at the end of the movie, or at the, after the credits, at least. Hmm. Nah, so I, I was in there for sure asking questions, looking stupid. Fuck. So. Now I gotta go to Comic Con and shit. He <laughs> said I need to read the comic books and shit. All right. But on from that, I just wanted to let y'all know how much money that that movie made. And I'm gonna say if you are um, a Marvel fan, you definitely wanna go watch it because it has a very surprising ending. Um, but with that, so we're gonna introduce a new segment to you guys. And it's actually my segment. And it's called Tiff Spill the Tea. You feel me? Um, so I'm going to give y'all a little bit of uh, drama, okay? And we got a lot of it um, in this segment. So what I want to talk about, and you guys are welcome to chime in. Actually, I, I welcome all opinions, okay? So we're going to talk about Black China. <laughs> Baby Girl is allegedly, She's a genius. reportedly... <laughs> Okay, so let's <laughs> let's back it up. Okay, let's back it up a little bit. <laughs> let's back it up. So we know in 2016 um, was her relationship with Rob Kardashian, mm -hmm. and from the outcome of that came literally her dream, dream. became dream. Okay, mm -hmm. if y'all know what I mean. But um, so we know she had dream back in 2016, and then that whole relationship didn't work out as speculations that it was just for TV. She was using him to get back at Kylie, yada, yada. That may have been true. We don't know. We can't say. Um, but we all know that she's had a few love interests since then. Since then, right. Like that, Black uh, China's just trying to get that meal She She had a couple, okay, <laughs> since then. But um, more specifically, what I want to talk about is her relationship with why? What is his name? YBN, NBA. YBN Almighty J. YBN Almighty, Almighty J. J. Like okay, that. so this little boy is eighteen. Okay, he, China's twenty nine. He looks sixteen. <laughs> China's twenty nine, and he's <clears throat> eighteen. Okay, and they've been dating for a couple months now, or something like that. Anywho, getting to the story, it's been reported that she's pregnant for this eighteen year old. And what y'all got to say about that? I mean, look, we all know what Black China is. Black China is trying to chase that meal ticket at the end of the day. And why being Almighty J, whatever his name is, is you know, he's he's an idiot. <laughs> first of all, he's an idiot. I don't know why he <laughs> cuffed Black China in the first place. Like, Because he's young, because he's 18. But he can't be that retarded. He's 18. <laughs> oh, and yeah, then. Yeah, he looks at it as, oh, that's Black China. Like, There's no way he looks at it. Like, he does. All, even even Rich the Kid, his his CEO boss hit Black China. Like we, like I don't understand. Like how all the, everybody in the industry hit Black China. Everybody and, in as the a, industry as a young hit nigga, each other. As a young nigga, like but as a young nigga, like it's like you don't want to hear about everybody that hit your gal. You feel me? So I don't understand like why he's even taking that seriously. That's should why it, he should it hit Shorty? So he can that's be so like, crazy <laughs> too. It's my bitch. I got her pregnant. Exactly. That's, that's a nigga but thing. That's though, the mentality. So. Of yeah, you are. You are. So okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, but I did want to also say. So I was reading right, 
And so it was said that they met on Christian Mingle. Who did? Them two? <laughs> Christian Mingle. And I don't think it's anything Christian about the statement that he made. And I quote. What's your source? <laughs> and I quote from his interview with No Jumper. Boop. I don't wear condoms. I would not fuck a bitch. I did not want to get pregnant. If I got China pregnant, I would keep that shit. Boop. That's what he said in his interview with No Jumper. And that don't sound like a Christian mingle introduction to me, you know? Sounds when, anything but. When, when was this interview? This interview happened, I don't know. Um, it was definitely when they was together, so a couple months ago. Are, they're still I, together, though, right? They are still yeah. together. Okay. So that's what was said on that. So maybe it was intentional. Now, I was just going to say, maybe he, she think he not in her on purpose. Secure his meal ticket. Uh, maybe. She probably, <laughs> maybe. I, feel like, I feel like she got more money than him at the she, end of the day. She does make bank. I mean, she has like a lot of advertisement mm-hmm. and brands mm-hmm. that she... Child support. She getting child support from Rob or not? I know she ain't getting that from Tiger. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Wait, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> How? We need them answers for yeah, right. I know she ain't getting it from him. But um, sure, she's probably sure. definitely getting it from Rob. And if she's not getting it from him now, then I know she's like probably going through some type of um, legal system so she can get it, like going through court and shit. Are well, they saying Rob going to try to get child support or trying to get custody of his kid now? Cause I know he's trying to get a damn child. I don't know how it's going to work. I mean, no, not child support, but... But even how how is that gonna work though? Okay, like gonna go to the judge and be like, well, she got pregnant by an eighteen year old. She's irresponsible. I mean, still like he's of age, right. he has income. I just don't see how he's gonna win that. But I want to see Rob <laughs> win though, because if Chris if Chris got anything to do with it, he's gonna win. So if she has she to anything to do with it, <laughs> yeah, he's she, gonna she win. She knows how to make them, them power she, moves yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. She, she, she didn't elevate the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> she put the whole family on. What? <laughs> like, she wasn't playing it's no like, game. you gonna do this, this, and that, and small. And yeah. that's how we're gonna eat. Everyone's <laughs> in the bag except for Rob, so she needs to work yeah. on him. Now, Rob's cheese. But, I, <laughs> you know what? I feel like he's very low maintenance. He don't do shit. As long as you feed him. <laughs> I mean, but like he, ain't, but he, ain't, he ain't. Sorry, What sorry. kind of income is he bringing to the family though? He ain't bringing no money. That's what I'm saying. She needs, she needs he had like, he had like socks him. or something like that. But like, what is he doing? Socks. Yeah, he has some bullshit. I see on Twitter he was no, trying he to sell some. But yeah, see, he's wow. trying to sell some bullshit. Like a yeah, a sock line. <laughs> <laughs> all this money you got, nigga, nigga started a sock line. Like wow. all this shit he could have started. He started a fucking. He, well, he probably started it because he was very insecure about his image. What a loser. Which Black China. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> but Black China <laughs> tried to help bring that, build that image back up for him. I mean, how would she build up? During their relationship. They had that she, show. They, had that, they were on a show. Before the sh- yeah. Well, before the show, remember she was trying to help <laughs> him work show. on his weight help and everything. Him. Uh-huh. <laughs> help, help him uh-huh. work on his weight. So, I mean, and his self confidence, yeah. getting him out of the house again. Nigga, so, we were rooting for them at a point in time. But I wasn't rooting for nobody. Hey, sometimes the richest the people be the most unhappy people. That's a thing. Mm-hmm. Say one more time. Sometimes the richest people or the more well-off people, because we just discussed that you don't think he's rich. Um, no, he's you know rich. He's be? rich, but like he's not wealthy. But that, that's, 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 that's a difference. That's a different subject. He's just not in the he's same, not, doing the same thing his siblings, his sisters are doing. Like, like they cash out on that brand, that Kardashian brand. He needs to cash out on that. He's Rob Kardashian. Oh, Rob Kardashian. He's holding the male name of the Kardashians Shit, right now, uh, and he's Scott not doing that better than him. Scott not even part of the family, but Scott's it's, live. I Scott, fuck Scott is, you know what? <laughs> Scott <laughs> is live. Scott, he, he, he got the juice. He, he got really the juice. is he's live, soft. bro. He'll say whatever the fuck yeah. he want to say. <laughs> Scott don't give a damn. I used to watch the show just for him, you know. I never I watched the show. What, I just saw little bits on what he's saying on the show, and I fucked I watched with him. it by default. <laughs> not, you're not gonna. You watch um, all the reality shows. That. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I watch them if need be, if it's necessary, or if I'm bored. I watched him. You bored all the time. Um, oh my god! On to the next <laughs> because he's geeking, obviously. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, let's see what's going on here. I do have another ad for you guys. Sorry, I didn't transition that very well, but we're gonna tell y'all about how you can go and get your smile together because this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care in a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care 
and the overall health and well-being of our patients. At Elite Dental Wellness, it's built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are a part of a family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Patisse and her team works tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Batiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. All right, you guys, smiles are important. Definitely go check her out. Um, so I think this is probably, oh, we got two more topics to talk about. We um, are getting to wrapping up the show, so we're going to briefly go through these. But um, I wanted to talk about my girl, Janelle Monet. okay? Now, she usually is not in the news, okay? She pretty much stays under the radar, um, or she has a, she has a, how should I say, unique following, But anywho, she just recently came out as being a pansexual. Now, we know that um, prior to some time, she came out as bisexual, Mm -hmm. okay? But now she said after studying um, what being pansexual is, she actually identifies with that as well. So she is declared herself as pansexual, okay? For those of you who do not know what pansexual is, Webster's Dictionary defines it as no limits in sexual choice with regards to biological sex, gender, or gender identity. What y'all think? I mean, I just think it's just a coincidence because literally like the day before that came out, someone laced me up on what pansexual was. So she came out, I was like, not even surprised. Like, Janelle Monae, she weird. Like, are you really surprised? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm actually a fan of her. I like her music. I think she is very pretty. Um, and I like that she she is very unique. She is, like, really unique. Like, as far as creativity, stuff that she do, I don't think people even think of, to be honest. Um, but I'm not surprised, okay? I just am a little thrown off with the pansexual thing. Just, I don't know how to feel about that. Because... I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't quite get it. Like, how do you, okay, <clears throat> so when you're pansexual, you just date anyone, basically. Basically, what she's saying is, you know, she for everybody. She for everybody. Literally. But I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I feel some type of way about it. Be just because if you're trans, transgendered to say, like, that would mean that you want to be with the opposite sex, right? I mean, not. I mean, look at Bruce Jenner though. Like, he turned himself into a woman, and he still wants to fuck women. So, yeah, he still wants his you know, manly, yeah, manly still, yeah. needs. <laughs> Bruce still got a dick. <laughs> this is what y'all trying to tell uh, me? Yeah. yeah. What? He never got, he never got a full. What? How you ain't know this? What? Oh my god. <laughs> he said he's still interested in women. So he's gonna keep his penis. What? So he wants to touch he his penis too. He just wants a <laughs> like, women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> is. That is. Sick. The dress that is, is sick. No, that is sick. It's a sicko for sure. That is sick. <laughs> I did not know that. I thought like he transformed everything no. down there. You know what I'm saying? No, he said he wanted to still have sex with women. That is fucking sick. I did not know that. Okay. Um. Mm-hmm. So. So I guess that statement is wrong in itself too. Um. Because I figured when you're transgender, you want to, like, transform yourself because you want to be, be with the opposite gender. sex. You nah. know what I mean? That's actually you're actually very wrong. I, know, I, I feel like. I've mean, come, come across a lot of transgenders that still like. It's just they want to be it's, that. It's not even gender, preference. It's like either, either or, honestly, like a man, man, male or female. It doesn't really matter. I'm very confused about that. I um, mean, it's not for us to really just understand. I don't even understand people that want to change themselves. Like, I don't understand so. that either. <laughs> it, it, there's no mistakes. Come on, guys. Like, everybody's like, oh, I was supposed to be born this. I'm supposed to be That's born touchy, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are no mistakes. <laughs> okay? Unless you have both. Hey, I, Okay, <laughs> then that probably was a mistake. Okay, yeah. somebody tipped you wrong. Well, but that means um, she'll date you too if you have both. Yeah, because <laughs> she's pansexual. <laughs> <laughs> and that was our producer Elijah. You guys, he just laced me on what I was talking about. If you have both, you are a hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. Okay. 
I, I have that definition wrong too. Obviously, I need to take a sex class, okay? Yeah, sexology, <laughs> for sure. So, if you know anybody that <clears throat> has those classes to offer, uh, definitely, you know, shoot me um, a DM. You feel me? Hop in my DMs and let me know about that. That was very weird. I'm oh. telling you to hop in my DMs yeah, about that. Hop in her DMs about that. <laughs> Coochie and all that. In a very good way, you guys. I'm trying to learn educational purposes. Um, yeah, I was confused about that too. But I'm like to just in that segment, I was not surprised um that she came out as pansexual. But with that being said, and as it's um getting ready to close the show, I'm gonna let you know who pays the bills up in here because this portion of the show is sponsored by the spear. Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need? to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Spear. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as a modern as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at thespear.tv. All right, you guys. Um, so, you need to... Get your product placement. Get it right here at the Spear. Um, but with that being said, uh, we are getting ready to close the show. But I have one more thing that I want to mention. And this just kind of popped off today. So um, if you guys were paying any attention to, um, or if you know of the comedian Michelle Wolf, she used to be a writer for um, Trevor Noah's show. I don't know if you guys, yeah, watch Trevor Noah. He took over the mm -hmm. Daily Show. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I like him. I really like oh, him. He's cool. Like he's he's like super dope. Um, I watched a couple of his stand-ups, too. You yeah, I I just I like him. So shout out to Trevor. But anywho, she used to be a writer for um his show, and then she actually quit a couple months ago because she got a deal with uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. So that's Michelle Wolf. If you don't know, just look her up. But just recently, she's been in the um in the media, kind of under fire for her comedic performance that she did at the White House Correspondence Dinner. So, you know, in that act, she mentioned that whoever booked her probably should have did a little bit more research on who she was. And at the end of her speech, I bet you they was thinking the same thing because she went in. I mean, I just don't see why she's so much under fire. Every, every, I don't every White House Correspondence Dinner... The comedians bang on everybody. Yeah, right. I'm talking about no, no, no prisoners. I'm talking about no prisoners at all. So I don't understand why everybody's on her ass. Like, what, what, what is, what is the highlighted statement that everybody's just so pissed off about? So uh, basically, they called her entire um, segment filthy <clears throat> and um, a disgrace. Right. Um, She's a comedian. To, to say to say the least or to sum it up in words but um what i think people they was offended by everything but more so what they was offended about she um kind of targeted sarah huckabee okay um and she said that she used her lies the burning of her lies <laughs> um to pan out that nice smoky eye that she had going that night <laughs> um and um you know so people said how dare she insult a woman's appearance and as if she's oh, wow. not a woman mm -hmm. okay and that's as so if, crazy hashtag bitches ain't catty yeah no that's insane i mean mm -hmm. especially looking at the administration that we're under right now come on man first of all <laughs> <laughs> yeah Hope. I mean, last year's correspondence dinner was with Hassan Minaj, which was one of Trevor Noah's other comedians, and he basically talked about Mike Pence being a pervert. So I don't understand. Like, they, they, they really just trying to find shit to be mad about. Yeah, right. For sure. yeah. For sure. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I feel like um, you know, being that that is the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. um, here's my thing. Y'all ass backwards because y'all mad at somebody who's a comedian for doing that. And, you know, as they say that sometimes um, behind some jokes and statements that there's truth. And there is a lot of truth in some shit that she says. So maybe that's why y'all are offended. Maybe y'all took the, the truth part instead of the comedic stance. But, <laughs> the okay. 
they, they did. Lies, <laughs> burning the ashes. Yeah, everything. I don't know. The joke was funny, but <laughs> it was funny, okay? Because you know that was that, that just mixed in very well. But my point to that is, you have um, a staff, an administration who has gone so hard for the fucking president that has offended everybody. Y'all didn't back up every statement that this man has had. He didn't talking about grabbing bitches by the pussy, and y'all out here defending him and saying. Oh, clearly that was a joke that was a joke but you can't take a joke from a comedian that's actually her job and, and she comedian. actually made that a pretty good joke because i don't think nobody would have thought about that shit you know you took the ashes right. and made a smoky eye with it that shit was good that was genius and you sit up here and you defend this man who just ha is outrageous with every statement that he has but then you're going to back door and say how offended you was by somebody that you well shit apparently y'all hired this coon this fucking nutcase too but this is somebody that y'all hired if you were not expecting these type of jokes maybe you should have did more research on it you know what i'm saying not to say that you can expect Any what's going to come out of people's right. mouth but i just feel like they ask backwards you want something to be mad at because you're defending a president who has openly said outrageous statements and offended several people on several different platforms but you're mad at a fucking comedian for making a joke about makeup i mean that's the epitome of this administration at the end of the day, the Trump administration they have no backbone, and they're just gonna be pissed off at anything directed towards them. I mean, look at the media. Every time, any time the media says anything about the Trump administration or Trump in general, it's, it's fake, fake news. news. Hashtag fake news. Fake everything, news. everything, <laughs> everything. And his <laughs> followers eat that shit up. Mm -hmm. They so. all stupid. I just I, here's my thing. So she came out and said that she didn't have any regrets about it, and I don't think that she should. Fuck them. Yeah, we I should, should apologize for her. And she's I, a comedian that's yeah, her the job book. they hired her like she was supposed to say some funny ass shit and that's what she did so they shouldn't have been mad they was just uptight you know? <clears throat> relax a little bit watch more comedian um stand-ups <laughs> familiarize yourself with the content but um with that being said that is our last segment that we're going to talk about today um uh, we do have something for you guys for upcoming events i'm going to briefly mention it because we're a little over our time so um houston we have if you have not got your tickets if you um, have got your tickets then you do know next week on the 6th is jambalaya one of the biggest concerts that is coming to houston it's going to be um a very 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 small fraction of what a coachella would be like you know so shout out to whoever put that together for for, you know, people who can't afford Coachella. We appreciate y'all. And um, with that, because um, I know people were very excited to see Cardi B. She will not be performing, as you all know. And um, who's taking her spot is Young Thug. Thug, Thug is taking her spot, you know. So that's pretty much all we have for this show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I um, think we gave y'all some really, really good information. And we're going to roll it out. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to the co-host. And then we're going to have our lovely guest go ahead and um, exit herself. Let her tell you where you can find her, anything that she may have coming up. And if you want to just stay connected with her, you know, maybe somebody is watching and want to shoot their shot. <laughs> I'll let y'all tell yeah, you where you can get DMs, her at. You, you know feel me? Man, she ain't got no boyfriend, right? Dang. <laughs> You ain't had to put on the spotlight uh, at any I, I am single, yes. I am single currently. <laughs> Let me go ahead and um, tell everybody where they can find you. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Queen Simba underscore or Instagram at Miss Faith Elizabeth. And make sure y'all follow me at Zane Taught Me. That's on Snapchat. I'm Beyond Her No More Though. Instagram, Twitter, all that. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of funny shit on there too. For sure, for sure. And as always, it's your girl at underscore tiffany no co on instagram and that is for all my social medias you can also check me out on my website at www.tiffanynoco.com i always have some good stuff on there for y'all and some amazing pictures if you just want to figure out how you could put your wardrobe together hit the girl up so as always we'll see you again here next tuesday peace